To me, a 4S power system is the sweet spot for a fun RC truck. You get that speed, you get the power, you can still manage control over the truck, and the trucks themselves tend to be more durable without being crazily overpowered. And that's why I really like the Arma Crate in 4x4 BLX. It was just a really fun truck to drive, and Arma is always looking for a room to improve their stuff, and they came out with a version two that has a few key tweaks that I think is gonna make this truck a lot more fun. So coming up in this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of the truck so you can get up to speed on it. I'm going to take it out for some fun and then give you my final thoughts if the Creighton 4S is still the sweet spot. Let's get right into the exterior styling. It still has the same sleek, truggy body that they had on the previous version. Now it's just available in two different colors. They've got a red and green, but same graphics, same decals. Still have the tethered body clips, hood skids, and then the molded dual deck spoiler in the back with some screw skids on top so it doesn't wear down on that plastic when you flip over. Compact front bumper, and I like that they've got a wheelie bar out back. This comes in handy when you're ripping around on the streets. I mean, it's a versatile truck. You can go off-road, on-road, do whatever you want with it on all four corners. They have the D-Boots Copperhead 2LP tires, nice low profile tire, large lug on this, really rips up the dirt, cool five spoke wheels and 17 millimeter hexes. Now we can take a look at the chassis that has actually gone through a couple of revisions. At first glance, it's gonna look the same as the V1, uh, but they bulked up the area for the hinge pins. They've also made a, a hole in the bottom underneath the spur gear so it ejects any sand or rocks that may work its way into that area. And then up top here, we've got these taller mud guards. These are very welcome because these tires really throw up a lot of stuff into the chassis tray. And the chassis tray's got a lot of bracing inside. You'll see the honeycomb pockets in there and everything. So when the dirt goes up and in there, it gets caught in that stuff. So this will help protect that, really cut down on the stuff that gets inside. Got tall shock towers, front and rear, adjustable body mounts. Even the wing has a really heavy duty wing mount, but you know, they've bulked up these chassis. They've been around for a while. They've been used on a number of their cars. They've really refined it. The battery tray is adjustable actually. So it, it fits a standard style pack. And then you can remove this rear spacer plate and use some of the Spectrum Large Basher battery packs. They've actually revised the uh, battery straps as well. There's a pocket underneath these plastic plates and that's where the wires go. So it helps secure the connector so it's not bouncing around and possibly become unplugged. Uh, let's take a look at the steering really quick while we're here, just a dual crank setup. They've got some pockets underneath or some openings underneath to allow any dirt to eject out of there or rocks so it doesn't bind up the steering. Covered receiver box, there's a Spectrum 315 receiver in there. I'll tell you more about the electronics in a minute. We'll take a quick look at the suspension uh, relatively unchanged. They've got the large bore aluminum body shocks on this. Super plush. I like that they've got the dirt guards on the front. Uh, longer versions of those in the rear. They've got new mud guards to protect the dog bones. Suspension arms look unchanged. Nice beefy arms on that. Heavy duty caster blocks and steering knuckles and hubs. Adjustable tie rods, which is very cool. I mean, it is a truggy style truck. If you want to hit the track with this, do a little camber tuning, toe tuning, you'll be able to do that. But the suspension just feels really good on this truck, just like a truck you should. The drivetrain is where they made some major changes. We'll start off up front. It's got a gear differential sealed, uh, EXB metal gears on the inside, and then they have the EXB drive shafts. These things are really heavy duty, metal drive joints on those. And now they have these protective covers over it so no dirt or rocks get caught in there and, and wear down on those composite out drives. They're composite, but they're really heavy duty. The, the only problem was rocks were getting in there, kind of just binding everything up. Uh, moving to the center, they've got the removable drive shaft. This one is ball bearing supported. And then right behind that, you see this massive new gear case. Before they had a slipper clutch, now they've got a center diff and that center diff has a cast metal housing. That's where a lot of heat builds up because that center differential is working to distribute power, give you the extra traction you need for <laughs> lots of fun driving, getting hooked up on tracks. So it's a it's a nice change to the truck. Uh, they've got a aluminum motor plate. It's machine, looks really good. All metal gears throughout that. And then as you would expect, a rear gear differential sealed up. They got the EXB drive shaft gears and rubber shielded bearings throughout. So to me, these are welcome changes to the drive line, especially especially with the hole in the bottom to go and eject any of that sand or dirt because again, that would get caught up in there and uh, really ruin the gears, but they fixed that. And finally, the electronics, they have a new Spectrum Servo in here that offers 236 ounce inches of torque, if I remember correctly. Uh, metal gears on the inside, 25 tooth spline and aluminum center section. They've also revised the speed controller on this model. This is the 120 amp V2 version. It's supposed to run a lot cooler, like that's got the new gray paint on it and gray and 
anodizing versus the orange that they had before. Wires are all nicely run. They, this thing has IC5 connectors, heavy duty wires running back to the motor. You can see that you got a cooling fan on top of the heat sink. Motor itself is a 2400 kV. Uh, that's what we've seen in there before. Offers some pretty good power. You're just gonna have to supply either two 2S LiPo packs or a 4S LiPo pack to power this thing. Uh, also comes with the SLT3 radio. A little bummed that it doesn't have AVC in it for the fun factor, but uh, those that get truggies kind of like the driving aspect, so it's fine that it doesn't have it. They also give you four AA batteries, instruction manual, uh, some basic tools, and some preload collars in case you need to adjust the ride height of the truck. It looks good. I like the V1 version. I'm excited to drive the V2 version. Let's head out to the track. <laughs> All right, guys, we got some crazy winds up at RC Madness. Hopefully the audio isn't too bad. They tore the track apart, but I can still see the line. We're just gonna have some fun with the crate. And... So you know, rip down the straightaway so you guys can see the top speed. That center diff is definitely pushing some power to the front. And, oof, that steering, really sluggish. Wonder if it's the uh, servo saver. steering but it's supposed to have more torque so maybe it's just a servo saver jumps well though look at that make my own lines on this track big air here yeah look at that this little touch of the brakes drop right back down very cool off the back jump here wow almost tripled it blast into the corner here <laughs> yeah we definitely need some a little steering tuning on this one i've got the dual rate all dialed up too nice and plush suspension a little track fashion time standing on the one of the big jumps here so i could just rip through this oh that was cool got their little whoops here Love those drop-offs, awesome. All right, let's hit this big jump again here, the double-double. Smooth, oh, I hit a rock and it moved me, but landed it, right? Big jump, awesome. All right, one more big air, let's see if I can double it. Yeah. You know what, we need to go backwards off of this one. First we'll go this way. Nice. Roll this, I can't see it, and boom! Look at that air! Oh, I landed it. So cool. Love this truck before in V1, V2, very cool. Big air. Yeah. Did one more big air with it. Yeah. <laughs> backflip, I wasn't expecting a backflip. Why haven't I been doing backflips? Yeah, that was absolutely sick. Oh, so awesome. Yeah. All right. Love it, Arma. We just got to work on the steering a little bit, but the rest of the truck, maybe a little heavier diff oil in the center. But man, these trucks are so much fun. I, 4S, 4S is pretty awesome in my book. 4S Truggy actually is really cool. Here we go, Creighton 4S speed test time. Send it down this way first. 
Spin it back around, and here we go, guys. That thing is moving. Now the box says it does 55, but that's with the optional pinion gear. And I'm just interested to see how it goes right out of the box, so you guys know. I think we definitely hit top speed on that. For a few seconds, we'll bring it back. Here we go. Little brakes down there. And we got 50. There you go, 50 out of the box. Heck yeah, this is where it's at, guys. I used to love racing trees, and obviously those are 4S powered, so when driving this, I was just brought back to those days of racing hard and just ripping around the track at madness. Was so much fun launching this thing off of the jumps. There wasn't any lanes for me to really carve some tight turns and stuff around, but it was a lot of fun to drive. The truck handles so well. I love the way this thing jumps and you could do backflips. I tried a few front flips. They weren't that great, but I did double backflips. Such a fun truck to drive. I liked the previous version. V1 was a lot of fun, but now with the few changes, it just bumps up that fun factor even more. I like a little bit heavier center diff oil. And then the other issue I had with it is the servo saver on this thing is way too soft. I mean, you know, we've got this better servo in here now with more torque and you don't really know it because the servo saver is giving out so what I wound up doing was uh, taking two long self-tapping screws and screwing it down through the servo saver. That locked it out and just, you know, I've got full steering now with it. Of course you lose that protection to the servo, uh, but if it eats, I'll go get a new servo. You know, this thing just needs full steering on it so you can get more enjoyment out of it. I mean, I like blasting through the corners and the loose dirt and stuff, but you want that precision feel from the steering, which you know you want in a truggy. Uh, you're definitely gonna have to do some tweaking there. Uh, I crashed this thing a bunch, and you know no hinge pin issues. I mean, I didn't have it on the previous version, so I can't complain about it. Uh, I like that they got the new covers around the out drive, so that protected that. That was an issue I had with the V1. But these, these are a blast, guys. And, you know, I like the Vortex, but I think this is going to take its place for my go-to armor truck when I'm going out to have fun. They, they did a great job with it. And, and I think I do like it a little bit better than the Outcast. I mean, I only have the, the V1 4S Outcast, but I like the stability of the longer chassis on the crate and very cool stuff. I'll have a link for it down in the video description and we'll see you back soon for some more RC Driver videos.